Okay, so here is how power works. With every big empire, there's a time that they rose, then there was a time that they were good and they were doing good, right? And then begins the fall. But what is the moment when an empire realizes that it is no longer top dog? There's a new power in town. Well, that's exactly what this video is about. And the empire I'm talking about is the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire. In this story, I'm going to tell you the exact moment when the Byzantines realized that maybe they're not the strongest anymore. Hi, my name is Misha and welcome to Tarihi Tales. This video is a part of the Ottoman history series and if you want to learn more about Ottoman history, head on over to the playlist linked here. Also, make sure to like, share, subscribe, it really does help. And if you like my channel, if you like what's going on here and you want me to keep going and tell you more about this history, head on over to my Patreon channel and help if you can. Here's the link. This was the map of the Ottoman Empire during the life of Osman. Now, Osman was the founder of the Ottoman Empire. He had conquered land from Jeni Shahar, which means new city, to Eski Shahar, which means old city, which soaked at its center. Now, Jeni Shahar, this area, was situated between two major cities, Bursa and Iznik. Both of these cities were on the list of the cities that Osman wanted to conquer, but he wasn't able to do so in his lifetime. And he passes away in 1323 or 1324. There's a bit of a confusion. And then came a new emperor, Orhan. Also, as usual, you can find the historical references I'm using for everything I'm talking about down below in the description box if you want to go and read up about it yourself. Okay, so now we have a new emperor. His name is Orhan and he's the son of Usman. Now, at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how much Orhan was able to grow the empire as compared to Usman. It's not a competition. Now, Orhan's first course of action was just like his father. He wanted to take Bursa. And during his lifetime, Usman had actually started sieging the city of Bursa. The siege had been going on for a couple of years now. So Orhan basically continued that siege. Now Bursa at that time was a part of the Byzantine Empire, but it was very isolated from the main body of the empire, thanks to Usman, because Usman had basically captured all the surrounding areas. He had already conquered the countryside that was around Bursa. So basically they were kind of cut off from the Byzantine Empire. So after a very, very long siege, Orhan was finally able to take Bursa and when he did, we don't know much about what happened afterwards, but in the year 1330 to 1332, we know that the famous traveler Ibn Battuta traveled through Anatolia and on his travels, he actually visited the city of Bursa. It was already under Ottoman control for, a, for some time now and he mentions seeing things like fine bazaars, wide streets, streets that were surrounded by gardens on every side. So he's basically painting a very rosy picture of Bursa under the Ottoman Empire. Now after taking Bursa, the next course of action for Orhan were two other cities, Iznik and Izmit. Both of them, big cities, the crown jewels of the Byzantine Empire, and also isolated from the Byzantine Empire, just like Bursa. Because as I mentioned, the surrounding countryside had already been conquered. So while all of this was going on, the Byzantine Empire itself was kind of suffering. Because at this point, obviously, they're not at their might at all. It's been quite a while since they've been there. And they've been facing trouble from other avenues as well. For example, the Tsar of Bulgaria attacked them in the year 1327. So Orhan was also watching all of this and he took advantage of this. A few years afterwards, in 1329, in an attempt to conquer Izmit, Orhan's army came face to face with the Byzantine army. But Orhan quickly realized that engaging in battle in this situation is going to hurt him very badly because the terrain wasn't supportive. They were on steep hills and he realized that his chances of losing are very big. So he never engaged in battle. He kept avoiding it. When the emperor Andronicus III of the Byzantine Empire saw this, he also started to retreat because he realized Orhan is not going to engage in battle. But Orhan actually sent a group of archers after their army and in the process kind of injured the emperor. He left Izmit alone for now and moved on to the next thing he wanted, Iznik. So they used the same tactic they used for all these other cities and they laid siege to the city of Iznik. The siege lasted a couple of years and by the year 1331, they had finally conquered Iznik. But 
By that time, most of the population of the city of Iznik had fled to Constantinople. So it was a pretty barren city at that point. Now, seven months after the city was taken, Ibn Battuta actually passes through this city too. But that, I mean, he's all over the place. And he stated that, that he found the city in a mouldering condition and uninhabited except for a few men in the Sultan's service. Now, the fall of Iznik was a big deal. Historians speculate that it was at this point that Andronicus III, the Byzantine Empire, the Byzantine Emperor basically realized that, my God, the Ottomans are getting too powerful and I might not be able to fend them off with my military alone. There's something else I should be doing because otherwise I'm going to lose probably everything. So this is the moment of the power shifting that I mentioned where the Emperor realized that he has to do something differently. And obviously, we don't know exactly when his mind, these thoughts came, right? But we do know certain actions that took place after the fall of Iznik, which indicate the same thing. So in 1333, two years after the fall of Iznik, the emperor puts aside his ego and as the historian Caroline Finkel says, demeaned himself by going over to Orhan himself physically. So the emperor of the Byzantine Empire went and met Orhan, right? The conclusion that came from this momentous meeting was that the once mighty Byzantine Empire would be paying the Ottomans to not infringe on their lands anymore. Now that being said, the siege or the work that was being done to conquer the city of Izmit was still going on, right? And it was not until 1337 that Izmit also fell to the Ottomans. Now the one thing historians say is crucial about the Ottomans during all these sieges is that the power they have, they're already strong enough that they can continue to maintain these long sieges because all of these cities, Bursa, Iznik, Izmit, they were very well-built cities with, with walls, with fortresses, and the Ottomans didn't have gunpower yet. So they couldn't break down the walls, right? But the fact that they could carry on sieges for years on end shows what strength they had because not only did they have more than enough men, but also they knew how to manage these men. They also had enough men that they were able to secure the areas they conquered with the ongoing sieges. So it's quite a feat because most armies would get tired and wouldn't be sieging these cities for so long. Now, as promised, by the time Orhan died in the year 1362, these are all the regions that he was able to capture. These include significant areas in Europe, including Gallipoli. He also annexed the areas of the Karasai dynasty and his reach extended all the way up to Ankara, which is also the modern-day capital for Turkey. Now, another interesting story that emerges from this story is how exactly was Orhan able to break into Europe? And this story is actually very tantalizing. I'm going to tell you all about it in my next video next week. So if you enjoyed, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And if you really want me to continue making this content, because right now I'm doing it for free, um, please head on over to my Patreon account and help if you can. Okay, see you next time.